Welcome back. I recently bought some of these vibration motors. I have two different kinds, the smaller ones and some bigger ones, which actually are a bit bigger than I thought. They looked smaller on the uh, AliExpress listing. And I bought these because some people had the idea to add a haptic feedback to the free touch deck. And uh, I thought, well, that's a good idea. I may play around with that and if it's viable add it to the code as an option but first I wanted to see what all these haptic feedback motors were about so I bought a few just put them quickly next to each other for some size comparison and that won't do you any good so here's a coin cell and this is the larger one and this is about one centimeter in diameter so this is well about two, two and a half, maybe an inch. The first thing I'm going to do is to use this coin cell and see if I can actually get some vibration out of it. So I'm just going to touch the negative lead to the negative side of the battery and it shouldn't really matter because it's a DC motor but still. And the positive lead to the positive side and that is actually well that's kinda Right, stop, stop. This is listed as being for a electric toothbrush or some toy. It might be a bit too powerful, I think, but we can try. The other one that is a bit smaller, let's try that. It's kind of difficult to get a good contact. There it goes. Oh. That's a bit better. I don't know if you can hear that. Let me touch the microphone with it. So I think I'm going to go for this one, but I'm going to try them both anyway. Now I'm going to have to build a little circuit for these. And for that, let's put these aside for now. I am going to use a transistor. It's a 2N5551. And I'm also going to need a resistor and because a DC motor is an inductive load I'm also going to use a diode and just to see how it would work driving this of an ESP32 I'm going to use an ESP32 and a breadboard now one of the first things I'm going to do is solder the leads of the motor to some pin headers so I can easily insert them into this breadboard This video is made possible by PCBWay. PCBWay is a professional PCB prototype and fabrication company who offers standard PCBs up to 14 layers, advanced PCBs up to 30 layers, flexible and rigid flex PCBs, PCB assembly and SMD stencils. I put my soldering iron away. And let's put the well, it's a bit further away and ESP like this let's see what pin am I going to use of course I'll need the 3.3 volts and ground and well one of these pins is fine let's get this in there we go now I'm building this circuit using a simple schematic I made. The transistor I'm going to use is this 2N5551 which has its emitter on the left pin, its base on the middle pin and the collector on the right pin. So one of the pins on the ESP32 goes through a 1K resistor to the base of the transistor and I'm going to use pin 33 and it doesn't really matter which pin it is uh, as long as it's an output pin. So I'm going to use pin 33 because that is also one of the pins that is broken out on the ESP32 touchdown. The emitter goes to ground and the collector goes to one side of the motor and the other side of the motor is connected to the 3.3 volt rail. Now across the motor there's a diode and this diode is as they say reversed biased meaning that the cathode of the diode 
is pointing towards the 3.3 volt rail and the anode is connected to the other side of the motor. Now when we stop the motor by turning off the transistor the magnetic field surrounding the inductor in the motor collapses and when it does there is a large voltage potential created across the motor in the opposite direction of the original flow of current and by adding the diode we are giving the current a place to flow instead of through our transistor potentially destroying it and just dissipating out through the diode and the coil itself alright I have written a simple sketch in Arduino it's just setting pin 33 in this case as an output and then in the loop I'm setting pin 33 high waiting 500 milliseconds setting it low waiting 500 milliseconds again and repeating that forever so if I now plug in my USB cable it should start doing something there we go it's vibrating I don't know and well let's stop this I'm just gonna hold it in reset while I change the motor and do the same for the other one and try that hmm is that a bad connection alright so it was probably a bad contact and it's also time to wrap this video up because one of my lights just died I'm using battery powered lights and uh, I forgot to charge it before starting this video and I think this is the better one to use because it vibrates pretty decently but not too violent I think this is made for well, more violent vibrations so I'm probably gonna just stick with this one but yeah that's how easy it is to drive a simple vibration motor um, just a, as you would drive any other normal DC motor thank you for watching uh, I hope you learned something uh, at least I did and I hope to see you next time Bye-bye.